it's a bit weird and useless to create a QR code standard that is this bad, but it's something, you know. Hi friends, welcome to the Barely Coding YouTube channel. I'm your host Daniel Bark, and today we are going to build our own QR code standard. It's not going to be a good one, maybe, but it's going to be a fun one. As you can see behind me is the browser and what we have so far is a doge image which I plan to use as the identifier for the phone to know where to look and also there's an input text below so the plan is that if we write something here we want that to result in a generated QR code that can represent this text value. So if we think about the number of characters we want to represent, we need to have at least as many values as the letters in the alphabet. So in the English alphabet, we have 26 letters. And if we think about the, the bits that we can work with, if we have two to the power of three, should give us, yeah, that's eight. So that's not going to cover it. 4 will be 16, 5 will be 32. So if we were to use 5 bits, all the combinations that will occur from that will be enough to cover the alphabet. So let's be minimalistic. Let's, let's use 5 bits for every character. And then we can just have a dictionary between the binary values and the character it represents. And then we even have like 7 extra characters that we could use maybe for uh, the characters that usually exist in a URL so that we can represent a URL. So if we decide on five bits then we need to decide on how many characters do we want to be able to represent. So let's say that we choose to have the dimensions of the QR code to be 10 by 10. That would be a hundred bits in total and if we divide that by 5 that means 20 characters so 20 seems to be a little bit too few so maybe if we do 15 by 15 divided by 5 then that's 45 remember we also need to fit our doge inside the QR code so we will lose a few bits there but 45 you can do a lot with 45 uh, most names will fit and some URLs will fit so let's stay on the small side and first go for 15 by 15 this is where we start code wise there's an app we have an image and an app wrapper and then a wrapper for the QR code and the doge image is inside the QR code and then under that we have our input element. So let's first make a piece of state. So we import use state from React. Okay, so let's think about our initial state here. Bits, set bits. We can have each bit to be represented by a boolean. So we do use state and here we need to pass our initial state, so that will be an array. So let's instantiate a new array. And with this constructor we can pass the length and that we need to calculate. So we said that we wanted to have 15 by 15. But uh, let's not use hard-coded values in the code. If we want to change it later, it's good to have it in a constant that we can change later on. So 15 would be bits per row, we can call it. 15. And instead of writing bits per row times bits per row, we can do a square. So math.power two and first we pass the value that should be squared bits per row so that will just take bits per row times bits per row and this will return a new array and then we can use the fill method uh, to fill this array 
with false. So now we should have a representation of the correct amount of bits and all the bits are set to false or zeros. So now let's think about how to split this up into components. I'm thinking that it would be a good idea to have one component for every character so every five bits is wrapped in a component and then that component can use a bit component that just renders bit by bit. So we could do QR character. We will send five bits to every QR character component. So to try this out, we can do bits. We can do bits equals bits dot slice zero to five. So let's create that component. QR so we get bits here and just to try it out we can do map bit and we return so we return one or zero so let's import the component import QR character from okay okay so we have five zeros that's a good thing so now let's make sure that we not just render the first five bits but with that we uh, split up this array into chunks of five so let's create a function here a that splits takes an array and returns it into an array of arrays where there are five values in each array. Split array. Let's call it split every. And we need to pass in the size of the chunks and the array that we want to split. So then let's do return array.length. This will be a super complex. I, I have looked online and found this super complex function, but I tried it and it seems to do what we want. We, we're going to have a variable, since it's going to be recursive, we need to have a result array that is passed in for every recursion. So if the array length is zero, then we return the result, because then we are done. But if it's not zero, we're going to call ourselves. So we do split every. So we call it with the same size again. And we take a slice of the array. So this will be this will take off the first five and pass on the rest. And for the result, we need to concatenate the part that we didn't pass, right? So zero to size. So the first time we come in with uh, our big array, array is not of length zero so we call ourselves with the same size but we take away the first five and we add to the result those first five so the second time it's called the first five is missing and it's uh, as a chunk in the result and when it has done that for the whole array uh, array length will be zero because it has slice them off and it will return just the result which will be the whole array but in chunks of five I hope that's understandable now we can do a loop by using this let's also import it import split every from utils so 
So we call split every every five. We pass in our bits and the result defaults to an empty array and that's fine. So we don't pass that in. Um, we don't need to hard code five here because we have we should have that as a constant as well. Bits per character is five. Bits per character. So this returns an array of arrays. So we map and we still have bits. We have five bits. So now we move this QR character and instead of this bits.slice we can just pass in those bits. And now if everything works we should see... Okay, it doesn't. Okay, let's debug this. Let's do some console logs. Do we have an error? No. Okay, I can see from this console output here that we're missing a return somewhere. And it's here. So now do we see anything? Oh yes, we have all our zeros being printed now. So now let's continue working on the QR character. Now we need another component to represent each bit. So let's make a component here. We call it qrbit.js. And for this one, we want to flip the background of the bit based on this value that is passed in. So let's finish this up first. Bits.map bit. So we do qr bit. qr bit. And value is bit. There we go. So now we have value coming in. And all we want to do is flip a background value. And I was planning to use style components for those who are interested in learning that. So we import style from styled components. And then we can make a little styled bit here. Styled bit on styled dot div and then template literals so let's set a height 10 pixels that should be big enough so that it's visible width of 10 pixels and now here comes the the special part where we flip the value of background So then we do, we go into JavaScript land and here we make a callback function. And what we receive in this callback function is the props. So here we called it value. And then we return, return value and based on the value if it's true, we return white, otherwise we return black. So now all we have to do is to use this styled bit and we pass on the value. So this value that's passed to styled bit is the value that we use in our little callback function here. So now each style bit should get this styling and it should be different based on the value. Okay, let's see what we have. QR bit is not defined, so we should import it in here. Import QR bit from Q, QR bit. Okay, <laughs> what do we have? Let's look if we have any errors. No errors. Oh, now we need to have a key prop. So let's add an index here. And we're interested in the, let's make the index so it's the bit index. So we can set key equals index for these. And then we can do K 
character index, which would be index times bit per character. These ones need to have a key as well. So we'll do index here and we receive the character index. So the key here, if we want it to be the correct index based on the bit, we could do character index plus index. Then they should all get unique indexes. Let's first switch this to red just to see if we in fact have anything. Let's start logging out some values here. Console log bits. Okay, we do get a lot of bits. Okay, so they are here, but they don't have a width. Oh, it was a misspelling. Okay, so now get ready to see all the bits. Yes. So now we can see that um, we have too many bits because we need to have a room for the doge identifier for the QR code. So let's figure out how many bits the doge will have. So it looks like it's, so if it's 15 bits on the width, it looks like it has one third. And so that means one third is five. So the doge should get five by five as its room. Subtract 25 of this initial state here. The doge should be able to fit neatly into our grid. Let's try to put the doge first instead of last in our flex container. Okay, not exactly perfect. Okay, so to get everything to line up, uh, since the bits are very small and the doge is big, I'm going actually to use a float left here and for each bit going to float left as well and let's see if we can get it to work. Now everything even though these are small the float left make them line up here and not continue on the next row down here. If you know how to do this in Flexbox, Flexbox exactly this floating left everything wants to be as high up as possible, then please let me know because I don't know how yet. Okay, so we have our doge, we have all our bits, and maybe now we can revert back to black here. And let's also try it in white. So if we flip this to true, it should all become white. Yes, perfect. Back to false, okay. If you know how to float left in Flexbox or Grid to get this exact behavior, please send me a code example of that because I really want to learn that because I don't want to use float ever again. Okay, so now let's start to think about the text value. If the text is empty, it would be okay for the QR code to look like this. But if we start to get a value, where we want the bit representations to start to appear in the QR code. So let's add an unchange handle text change const handle text text change is equal to get the event. So we can do const letters is equal to e dot target target dot value dot split. So now we have it into or we can call it characters care charts. Let's convert this to numbers const numbers and for this part to get from a character to a number, we are just going to create our own dictionary for that. So we get a character, so we can call it K 
character to number. So we take in a character and we should return a number. So let's also create a dictionary. New map and then an array of arrays. So in each of these arrays we can say that empty string is a zero for example. And then we just continue doing this. So we can say that a is one and so on for all the letters of the alphabet. And I will just cut this away. Here's the finished dictionary. So we have nothing at zero. On one we start at a and then the alphabet. And then after said we have a space, we have a colon, we have a dot, we have a slash and we have a question mark. So this should at least allow us to save http colon slash slash and dot com for example. So this function just has to return dict dot get character. So now we can continue with our thing here. We do cars dot map and for each character we do character to number and it imported us for us. So now it's converted to an array of numbers. So one number for each of the, the characters. So let's, let's just make sure this works. Numbers, maybe not, A. Okay, so we get undefined. Let's do console log characters. A, okay, so we get A, but there's something wrong with this character to number. Oops, this should not be a string. So now I expect it to work B. So A, B becomes one, two, and that's correct. So now we are going to convert a number to a binary value. Let's create a function for that export const number to binary so we take in a number so we can first convert it to a binary string by doing this this is bitwise operations i don't exactly understand how this works this one will give us a binary representation of the number as a string. Console log here as well, bin string, just to make sure that, that is correct. So since this is a string now, we want to have it as an array of bits. So we do bin string dot split dot map. So here we get uh, a string, which is string zero or string one. So we do parse int on the bin. So then it becomes the number zero or number one binary numbers equals numbers dot map. And each number we call it to numbers, number to bin called with a number. Now we should get some console logs and let's also console log in numbers. Do we have an error in our utils? We called it num somewhere. Number, maybe no, ABC. So we get ABC and then one, two, three, and then A is one b is one zero and c is one one and then we convert it to one one zero and one one as arrays instead so that is pretty successful but our state is in booleans not in ones and zeros so let's convert it to bool bools so bin numbers dot map bin values so it's still an array so we return 
bin values dot map in number and we we'll just return the bin number casted to a boolean so console log bools so let's see if we achieved what we wanted to so now I just have a b so first it's one and one zero and then it should be true okay it's always true for both so obviously we did something wrong here okay here's the error this should be bin values bin let's clear it out here bin, bin number arrays bin number arrays just so we understand what this is and now we can call this bin numbers bin numbers and in here it's a single bin number so let's see if we have it correct now true true false so good we have converted it to booleans from starting from characters into numbers and then into booleans but there's one thing we need to do still because as you can see from the console log the booleans are of different sizes so for for the a it was enough with just one bit of course this sh they should all be represented by five bits and uh, so what we want to do is add just pad it with zeros uh, from the left side so let's do that let's create a function called pad left pad left and what value to pad with and the desired length um, and of course the array that we should pad let's first make a copy of our array so that we don't modify it directly so we do json.parse json.stringify array and then we do a while loop array copy dot length is smaller than the desired length we just do array copy yeah unshift value return array copy so let's console log array copy when we're done to see if it's correct padded bools equals bools dot map pad left so the value is false we want to add false or zeros we want it to have a length 5 and the array that we're padding is b the arrays that we are looping so let's see if it works okay so a is now false 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 true b is false 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 true false seems okay c is true true in the end and d is false false true false false perfect so now we have binary representations as booleans so now we have an array of arrays and each of those arrays are an array of bools but the state has a flat array so now we need to flatten this array do const flattened equals there's a little trick where we take an empty array and we concat dot apply and then we pass in our bools so let's see if this worked console log flat flattened okay we're not we're supposed to use padded bools here okay now let's see if it worked a b 
So 10 should be 15, 20, and so on. Okay, so now we have it uh, represented as a flat array. The last step we need to do is to make the state the correct length. So we need to do a pad, but instead of a pad left, we should do a pad right. Before we wanted to push the bits to the right, and in this case we want to pad the rest of the state with just empty bits. So let's make a pad right function as well. And that should be very similar, but instead of doing an unshift, we do a push pad right. So now we can do new state equals flattened or pad right. So the value is still false. The length we want is actually the same length as we calculate here. So let's steal this. And the array that we want um, to pad is the flattened. So now we have our new state. So now we can just do set bits new state. And now we can maybe start to see the magic here. See, I erased everything and we got an array of 200 with just false. And if we think about how many bits we have, we have 15 by 15, which is 225. And then we subtract the 25 for the space where the doge is. So 225 minus 25, that's why we have 200 bits. And we can see them all here. Let's write an A. And there we have the representation of the A. We can do an H, G. So as you can see, these five first squares represents the first bit. So now if I type my name, I can't use uppercase letters. Daniel Bark. It starts to form a QR code here. Subscribe to Barely Coding. The Barely Coding standard is going to the moon. Okay. Now we see the next thing we need to fix. There needs to be a max length on the input. And that should be pretty easy to calculate. So we just set here a property max length equals to. So first we calculate math.power bits per row times itself. And then we subtract 25. But this will give us the amount of bits and we want the amount of characters so we need to subtract it by bits per character. So now if I keep typing here, once I reach the maximum level it will not keep letting me add because we reached the max length. We did it, we have a new QR coding standard. I don't think using the doge for the identifier the normal QR codes use these squares, and I think those are much better for the mobile cameras to identify. But it's something, you know, it's our own standard. So now it's up to one of the subscribers to create this app that can scan this. I, I'm not going to be the one. So I hope that you learned a thing or two and that you had fun watching this tutorial. It's a bit weird and useless to create a QR code standard that is this bad, but I learned a few things by, by creating this. So I'm super happy that you watched. If you reached this far, you are a real champion because this was not the easiest project and I almost confused myself many times. Uh, but I hope that you had fun and uh, see you in the next video.